Welcome back. Today I'm going to make a Cryptex. I've been working on quite a few of these, trying to put the DVD together, so I thought I'd show you a few tricks I learned since I made the first one. Let's go ahead and get started. The Wood Shop is sponsored by these fine companies and viewers like you. We're going to start with the rings first. This is a piece of maple. It's about an inch thick, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to bring the diameter down to about two and a half, and I'm going to use the square easy rougher for that. Lathe speeds at 3,000. I have a two and an eighth inch Forstner bit and I'm going to go in three eighths of an inch right there at my mark and this will be the outer ring. I have the lathe speed turned down right around 150 or so and I'll vary that a little bit depending on how it's going in. Now I'm going to switch bits and go to the inch and three quarter. And for this one, I'm just going to go and go ahead and put it up there and set it. But I'm not going to, going to go in very far until I get my the width down first. I'm just going to go in just a little bit, and I'll I'll show you. We're going to finish it off, but I'm just going to set it. For these rings, I'm going to go half an inch. I wouldn't wouldn't go much less than that. They you need a little bit of a channel in there for the pins to ride in, and if you, you start getting below that, it gets a little tight in there. So I like to go at least a half an inch, maybe a little bit more on on some of them. So what we're going to do is come in with the parting tool, but I want to clean up the face here and on this side. I want to taper them in just a little bit so that they seat together nicely and there's not a bow and it leaves a gap. For that, lay speeds back up to 3000 and I'm just going to use a parting tool. Bring this down to the diameter of the first Forstner bit, the 2 and an 8. What I'm doing is creating a little tenon here so that the rings will lock together and won't flop around. Then I'm going to come in with a thin parting tool and go down about a quarter of an inch past this and then I'll use the Forstner bit to go all the way through and part it off. There's less chance of it breaking this way. After making all the rings, it's time to make the larger of the two tubes. This will be the tube that all the rings mount onto. I'm going to bring it down just under inch and three quarter. I usually slide one of the rings on the quill of the tailstock just for final fitting. I drop down to an inch and a half Forstner bit to drill out this tube and it'll leave the wall thickness right at eighth of an inch. All right, now that we have all that cleaned out, I'm going to bring the tool rest up to it and we need to cut a channel. It doesn't have to be on center, just uh, close, try and make it, make it parallel. But what we're going to do is this is the channel that the pin is going to ride down. Make a straight line, roll it over. It, this can vary. I mean, it, you know, it needs to be at least an eighth of an inch, but I always go, I don't, probably close to half an inch on it, just so it has some room. Well, maybe a little bit less than half an inch, but it it just needs to have have enough room for that for the pins to ride down. But so I always give it a little extra. Same process here, this is the inside tube, so I have a lay speed at 3000, I'm using the easy rougher to get it close, and then I'll do final pass with the skew chisel, and then do some final sanding. So the final size on this is the little under the inside diameter of the outer tube. So I'm going to drill this out with a one inch Forstner bit. I want to leave this tube a little bit thicker than the other one, so that the pins have a little bit of support. I'm going to make the two outer rings. I hot glued on a piece of myrtle wood for this. Lathe speeds back up at 3000. On these rings you can do whatever you want. You can make them thicker, thinner, larger diameter. They're going to be glued on each end of the outer tube and your tumblers will be in the center. You just need a set starting point for your code to line up on when you're all done. 
Same process with this, you drill with the larger Forstner bit and then the smaller one so that the inside diameter slides over the outer tube. For the two end caps, I'm going to use walnut. And again, I just hot glued it onto a waste block. These are about two and a half inches long and a little over the diameter of the rings. You can get very creative with these, do some inlay work. The only thing you need to do is make a recess on one of them for the larger tube and a recess on the other one for the smaller tube. The trick is getting them both to look the same. After I'm done giving its basic shape, I'm going to use the chuck and that recess, expand the jaws to finish off the top of it. After the end caps are done, it's time to start gluing it together. You glue the end caps to the tubes and one of the outer rings. I just used a little bit of wood glue and let it set up. While that's drying, I need to drill out a quarter inch hole in the remaining rings on the inside. I did this with the drill press. It works pretty easy, just slide it right down the side there. And then what you're doing is creating a channel that the pins are going to slide into when the code's all lined up. All right, this is a good example why you don't have three video projects going in your editor at one time. I somehow deleted the footage of marking the, the pins out on this one, so I'll show you on this one here. What you do is slide the inner tube in there, go ahead and mark down center on it, like that. And for your first one, just go ahead and come away from the wall here a little bit, at least an eighth of an inch. Give yourself a little bit more room than that. I would and move on to the next ring. Slide it in there. Line it all back up. Make sure this is tight. Put some pressure on that and mark for the next one and so on. I'm using an eighth inch aluminum rod for the pins, but you can use a wooden dowel if you want. And I just drill with the drill press where I had marked. You want to drill the hole in the tube a little bit smaller than the pin so it's a tight fit. I'm going to glue them in with Gorilla Glue. It bonds to both metal and wood, and I'll just press them in with pliers. I'm cutting them off a little bit proud too, and I'll trim them down after the glue dries. While this glue is setting up, we need to glue on the last ring, or the tumblers and the last ring. And to do that, I use the lathe and I use the tailstock to open up the outer ring. So just put a little bit of glue on that last ring, try not to get any on the inside rings, and bring the tailstock up. Your live center will kind of open up that tube and put some, just put a little bit of pressure on it. I turn the lathe on too to make sure that all the rings are spinning freely. And you kind of got to babysit this. I come back every, I don't know, every couple of minutes and make sure that all the tumblers are still moving. After the glue dries, it's time to do the final fit for the pins. Just slide each one of them up there, mark it with a pen or a pencil and trim them off just work your way down. I usually hit them with a little bit of sandpaper too to knock any burrs off. Now I need to line everything up for the coat. I just made this little key, just a piece of wood, just under a quarter of an inch, slide it in there, it lines up all the tumblers. You need to make two set points on the two outer rings and lightly mark with a pencil where the coat lines up. So when you take it back to, over to the lathe to lay it out, you know where the coat is and you can line it back up. I used a rotary tool to put two dots on the two outer rings for the set point and then took it back to the lathe and used the indexing system on that to lay out for the letters. And for that I just used a simple template and just traced them out with a pen.
I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put some detailed pictures up of all the individual pieces at the end. The DVD is taking me a little bit longer to get done than I thought, but I'll have it up on my Etsy store soon. All right, if this is your first time here, I have a new project video every Friday. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, take care.